Hi, and welcome to my channel, Countdown to Armageddon. Today, I wanted to talk about hell. A lot of people don't believe there is a hell, and they certainly don't believe that a loving God would send people to hell. I was actually one of those people who didn't believe in hell. For quite a while, I believed that God was too loving. There's no way he would send a person to hell for all eternity, to be tormented for all eternity. Didn't sound like a loving God to me. I was a Christian at the time, saved, baptized in the Holy Spirit, and I didn't really, really think there, that hell was, was right. At any rate, I had a dream at this time. I was in my 20s, and I was drinking a lot. I was going out with friends and partying and drinking excessively. I mean, quite a lot. And in this dream, I, I had a voice speak to me, which I believe was God. And the voice said, basically, if you don't quit drinking, you're going to go to hell with all the rest of your friends. That was the message of the dream. Well, first of all, I'm a Christian, saved, once saved, always saved. So how can I go to hell? And number two, I don't even think there is a hell. It just doesn't sound right. Well, that made me think about that. Maybe there is a hell. Maybe I'm getting this thing wrong. I'm being told I'm going to go to hell if I don't smarten up. And I'm a Christian. I'm supposed to be washed in the blood of Christ, saved forever. That's it. Apparently not, according to this dream. Well, it did sober me up. And I have to tell you, I pretty much completely quit drinking. I certainly quit drinking excessively. Um, I might have a drink once in a while, but nothing like what I was doing then. And with a lot of forethought about it because of my dream. I often think of that when I'm about to take a drink. Gee, you know, how much can I drink here? I just don't want to go to hell with all my drinking buddies. So the question is, would a loving God send people to hell for all eternity, to be tormented for all eternity? Well, first of all, if you believe the Bible, the answer is yes. Jesus will judge people and send them to hell, according to the Bible. And yes, even a born-again Christian baptized in the Holy Spirit can go to hell. I know that sounds crazy, but it's true. And I'll give you the scripture that, that I believe proves it. In Matthew 7, verse 17, we read, Even so, every good tree bringeth forth good fruit, but a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit, neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Every tree that bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. Now, I think he's saying here, you, good works matter. You, If you belong to God and you have been saved and you've accepted Jesus as your Savior, you have repented of your sins, which means you've turned away from them. And now you're living a good life full of good works. Okay, a good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit, neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. All right, now to verse 20. Wherefore, by they, thy fruits ye shall know them. So if you're a Christian, there better be good fruits. Again, good works. Twenty, Verse 21. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Again, this is good works. And who calls Jesus Lord, Lord? Well, it's not the world. They're, he's not their Lord. They don't call him the Lord, Lord. Christians call him the Lord, Lord. And if we go down a little farther, you'll see that this is the Christians he's talking about. Now, verse 22, many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works. Now, does that not sound like Christians who are baptized in the Holy Spirit, operating in the Holy Spirit, those are some pretty elect Christians he's talking about. And in verse 23, this is what he will say to them. And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. Therefore, whoever, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them, I will liken him unto a wise man, which built his house upon a rock. So he's, it's pretty clear here. Do what Jesus says, go to heaven. Don't do what he says. Don't have good works. Just be a lip service Christian. Jesus, forgive me, but never change your ways. Um, love the devil. Serve the devil. This is These are Christians, but they're not very good Christians, are they? And he's saying he's going to send them to hell. That's what this scripture is saying. Okay, now, all of this, of course, is just to establish that Jesus Christ will send people to hell that there actually is a hell. But the question we're trying to ask is, 
would a loving God send people to hell? Or we're, we're trying to answer. Well, if you want to know more about this, you could just do a, a search right here on YouTube for Jesus appearing and showing people hell, or near-death experiences where Jesus shows people heaven and hell. And I think it's pretty clear there is a hell, and Jesus is going to put people in there. Um, there's scriptures where Jesus will judge everyone, and according to their works, uh, people believe this could this is non-Christians who are being judged, but not according to the scripture we just read. Um, this is where you get judged, and then he decides where you go. And some of those people are going into hellfire for all eternity. So I guess we could answer the question, is a loving God going to send people to hell for all eternity? And the answer to that question is yes. Well, it doesn't seem very loving, but I will say this. God came up with a plan for you and for me and everybody where we could escape hell for all eternity. And it's been provided for us. And that's because he sent Jesus Christ to earth, who was a sinless man, who became the sacrifice for our sins so that we could be saved and go to heaven. So Jesus, or God the Father, made a plan. And we can choose that plan, or we cannot choose that plan. So it really is up to us, not that God is deliberately sending us to hell. He's found a way for us to escape. But it isn't just an escape with a lip service prayer, Jesus forgive me, like an incantation. It's an actual, you must repent and turn from your sin, love holiness, hate sin, hate wickedness. You can't participate in all of that and still get into heaven. And you know, God is a righteous God. Jesus hates sin. God hates sin. One sin. Any little sin would have kept you out of hell. But Jesus came to earth, and now it's possible for you, because he died and rose again, it is possible for you to be forgiven of that sin. And that gives you the right to work out your salvation with fear and trembling, which is another scripture. What's to fear? What's to work out if it's all done for you? There's plenty to be done. And that is you've got to be holy. You've got to overcome this world. The Bible says you must overcome this world like Jesus overcame the world. There's another scripture. Be ye perfect, even as your Father in heaven is perfect. There is more than just an expectation that you will have good works. It is a requirement for heaven. You must become holy. You must say goodbye to the, the demonic and come into this the realm of heaven and live a holy life here on earth. And hell? What is hell? Well, hell is a place where there is no God. He, his holiness doesn't belong where there is wickedness. His holiness is heaven. And if you separate yourself from God, you just you choose. You're going to be an evil person. You're going to participate in all these sins. You like your sins. Satan has you trapped in sin. That you're going to go to hell. And hell is a is a place where there is no presence of God. There's no light in hell because God's not in hell. There's no joy in hell because God's not in hell. There's no happiness in hell. There's no love in hell. Uh, there's no good in hell. That's where you go. It, it's a place where you are separated from God. And you chose it by not accepting Jesus Christ. And he is, yes, a loving God because he provided you with an escape. You have it. But this life is very serious. People don't take it serious. This is your last chance to get it right. You must choose God, choose holiness. This is where you're being watched, basically. Yes, God is watching you to see what you will do in every single situation to see if you are going to choose him or if you're going to choose the devil. And that means you have to make your choices all day long, every day for Jesus Christ and for God the Father. So I hope that answers your question about would a loving God send people to heaven or to hell? And yes, because they're basically sending themselves there by their actions, by rejecting holiness, by rejecting God's goodness. They're rejecting it. They're choosing to serve Satan, choosing to walk with Satan. And you know, where do you live when, you, when it's all over? With the master you chose. If their master is Satan and they chose the master of Satan, they will live in hell for all eternity with Satan. If they cho chose Jesus Christ, God the Father, you will live in heaven, in his holiness, in all the good things that he, he is, you will experience them in heaven. Make your choice now. Don't let anybody dissuade you from serving Jesus Christ and getting your life right. Because that's where you're going to, it's going to be determined where you will spend all, etern all of eternity. I would encourage you to look at all the testimonies right here on YouTube of people who were, went 
to hell, given a second chance, it is a real place. And if you don't pay attention and you don't respect God and you think, ha ha, I don't believe in God. I don't, I don't need any of that. You're going to get a really horrible, a horrible eternity. Okay. So please do your research, look this up and accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior and serve him. And then you'll be assured heaven. Okay, you've got to serve him. You've got to turn from sin. That is the way to heaven. And by the way, it's a narrow road, and the Bible says very few people find it, which means it's not an easy thing. You have to get really serious about your soul and about serving God and about being a holy person, living a life the way God wants you to live it. So that's my little, that's my talk for today. And I, I hope you'll get right with Jesus. Have a great day, and God bless you.